Hello everyone, welcome to Tentizen. Here you can see picture of mandible of child and this is picture of mandible of adult. So what is happening here? There is change in size and shape of mandible as the child grows and the same happens for all the bones of the body as well as alveolar bone, the bone which forms the socket for our teeth. So this process by which there is overall size and shape of our bones is established that is known as bone remodeling re means again so there is reshaping of the bone so for that to occur there has to be bone resorption as well as bone deposition occurring at the same time so we can say that in the process of bone remodeling both bone formation and resorption occurs at the same time so what it is when it happens how it happens what are the factors that regulate it control it what are the diseases that can arise if bone remodeling is not normal we are going to discuss all these in today's video on bone remodeling so let's start before starting quickly subscribe to tentos and, and also give a like to this video as i keep making such interesting videos for you so let's see first what it is it is a process by which overall size and shape of our bones is established in the adult skeleton so it happens from the embryonic bone development till pre-adult period of human growth and both the processes formation and resorption are happening so bone forms rapidly over which surface of the bone over the outer surfaces that is periosteum surface and where it resorbs yes on the inner surfaces then only it can increase in size so resorption occurs on the endosteal surface which is the inner surface and also it can occur over some points focal points of periosteum and then when more area where resorption can occur is compact bone so compact bone forms the cortical plates of the bone it is made up of haversian system where the bone is arranged in layers around a central canal which contains the vessels so this is called osteo this arrangement and within this osteo of compact bone also there can be resorption so there is increase in the length and the thickness of bone only when formation of bone is more than resorption so during growth phase two these two processes are happening and formation is more than resorption so this replacement of old bone by new bone is called bone remodeling or bone turnover so we can say another name for bone remodeling is bone turnover so when it happens during growth phase after fracture for the repair of small cracks micro cracks which arise under stress and for mineral homeostasis balance of minerals in the body some hormones can act on the bone and can remove the minerals and can cause remodeling now what is bone turnover rate how much bone is remodeled in young children in growing children it is about 30 to 100 percent per year yes that means whatever bone tissue is present today in a child will not be there after one year it will be replaced by new bone what about adults in adults it does not stop but it slows down so whatever amount of bone is resolved equal amount of bone is formed to keep a balance now with further increase in age and with a disease like osteoporosis resorption is more than formation so bones become weak with age so that is bone turnover rates how they change with age now what about the change of bone turnover with different types of bone so in the compact bone or cortical bone it is five percent per year and in the spongy bone or the trabecular bone and endosteal surface of compact bone it is more that is it is 15 percent per year now how it happens with the coordination of the two cells two friends osteoblast and osteoclast osteoblast bone forming cell osteoclast bone resorbing cell so these cells they cluster together and they arrange in focal areas in that area of the bone remodeling for example this is the trabecular bone and this trabecular this bone remodeling unit is created which is known as bone remodeling unit or basic multicellular unit multiple types of cell resorbing and depositing cells are there so they form an area in which the leading edge is formed by the osteoclast cell because it is going to resorb the bone first so it is on the leading front and following them are the osteoblast cells which are forming the tail of this area because they have to form so we can say that there is this is called bone remodeling compartment which is created by these cells and the both the processes that is formation and resorption is happening simultaneously together and this is called coupling mechanism of the bone remodeling so don't you think we should know the from where these two friends are coming so the osteoclast cells they come from the hematopoietic stem cells that is monocytes are their precursors so these monocyte cells they join together fuse together to form large multinucleated osteoclast so they are coming from hematopoietic stem cells what about osteoblast they are single nucleated cells so they come from the mesenchymal stem cells so these two types of cells they work together in unison and they carry out this process of bone remodeling in five phases so the sequence is first is activation when the signal is given second is when the resorption that is taken done by the osteoclast cell so it will resorb the bone so that is the second step after the resorption a third cell reversal cell will come and will prepare this area for formation by the osteoblast and now in the fourth stage this osteoblast will lay down new bone over this resorbed bone 
and fifth phase this osteoblast will take rest and it will become quiescent cell so those are the five phases activation is the signal activation resorption by osteoblast reversal by reversal cell formation by osteoblast cell and resting it takes rest now let's see how these five phases go first in the trabecular bone and then in the compact bone so in the trabecular or the spongy bone of the alveolar bone as we can see here this is the area so if we magnify this area so we can see in this point this area is the bone remodeling unit now first how the activation happens a signal comes whenever there is any crack so that is sensed by a cell which is present within the bone that is called osteocyte cell so yes the first activation is done by the osteos when where there are physical changes like cracks or hormonal changes that signal is sensed by osteocytes and it converts it into biological signal now this signal is taken by the cell which is osteoblast cell and it changes its expression of some molecule so that it can call its friend osteoclast for the resorption of this age so it will change the expression it will increase the monocyte colony stimulating factor and rankle expression and will decrease the expression of osteoprotegrin so increase mcsf will lead to increase in the proliferation proliferation stimulation of the osteocyte precursor that those are the monocytes so under the increased rankle l is ligand which is going to bind something so it is going to bind ligate with the mole receptor of the same name which is present over the osteoclast precursor cells so that is called rank receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa beta so when this binding happens these are these differentiated differentiate and they fuse to form multinucleated osteoclast cell not only that osteoblast also helps osteoclast cell further in creating the adhesion sites how it creates the adhesion sites by removing the matrix which is present over the bone surface how it removes the bone matrix it also releases some enzymes which are called matrix metalloproteinases protein breaking enzymes which breaks the matrix which is present and then the osteoclast will come and will bind to these adhesion sites now the next step is the resorption step now that is carried out by the osteoclast cell it will resorb that area of bone will form a concavity which is called how ships lacuna some growth factors are released which will further give the signal and now a reversal cell will come which will remove any undigested material which is lying over this resorbed surface so this reversal cell is mononuclear cell and it is thought to be of osteoblast origin as it remains resembles osteoblast it also has alkaline phosphatase so this reversal cell will re remove these material and now it will prepare the bone surface for formation and now osteoblast will change its expression it will decrease rankle and will increase osteoprotegrin with this what will happen osteoclast differentiation will stop so now osteoclast undergo apoptosis and now the reversal line is formed that is cement line which contains glycoproteins like osteopontin and bone siloprotein over the old bone and over which this reversal line now the osteoblast will lay down bone in the fourth step that is formation so when they are laying down whatever osteoblast they get embedded inside the forming bone now they are called osteocyte cells and finally when the entire bone formation is complete these osteoblasts enter resting phase they become flattened cells as bone lining cells over the surface so those are the five phases that happen activation with the osteocyte signal second resorption with the osteoclast and third reversal by the reversal cell reversal line formation fourth formation by osteoblast cell and resting of the osteoblast is the fifth now let's see how it happens in the compact bone so compact bone the system of uh, bone arrangement is called haversian system where there is central canal and layers so these are called lamellae so there are multiple lamellae which are called concentric lamellae in between these lamellae we have bone which is called interstitial lamellae and on the periphery we have these circumferential lamellae outer boundary is by periosteum and inner layer is by endosteum now when the osteoclast has to cause resorption in the compact bone these areas of the alveolar bone first it will tunnel into the surface of bone so form a tunnel and then it will go to the canal haversian canal which is nearest to the surface so let's see if it is the nearest haversian canal is this one so it will travel along along the blood vessel so it will travel along the blood vessel and will reach there at the site of bone remodeling and now it starts resorption of the haversian lamellae and it will also cause resorption of the some of the circumferential lamellae so we can say this is the in the longitudinal section we are seeing and this is the cross section so let's draw the entire structure so here we can see central medullary cavity surrounded by the compact bone so in the compact bone we can see osteon's blood vessel along which the osteoclasts go and resolve the bone following them are the osteoblast cells which will form the bone so let's see magnify this area and see it in the two sections so the first is the longitudinal section so in this longitudinal section we can see this blood vessel and osteoclast following that and then in the cross section we can see from the top 
so first in the longitudinal section so these osteoclasts are traveling along the blood vessel which contain rbcs so monocyte cells which are precursor of osteoclasts will migrate outside this blood vessels and will go to the bone surface and will form osteoclast cells so now they have turned into multinucleated osteoclast they will resorb the bone surface cell. circular array is created of the resorption base so this now is the leading edge of the resorption so this is called the cutting cone or the resorption tunnel which is created by the osteoclast following them are another cell another type of cells which are pre osteoblast cells what will they do they will convert into osteoblast cells so this is pre osteoblast they convert into osteoblast and now they will lay down bone over this resorbed surface first there is formation of cement line over which new bone is deposited and osteoid unmineralized matrix will remain there and the osteoblasts which get embedded inside now they form osteocytes so this area where the active bone formation is happening is called filling cone filling cone so two cones are seen cutting cone and filling cone so when we see it in the cross section from the top just imagine we are seeing this one osteon and we are cutting it here in the cross section so we can see this lamellae and in the center we can see all the osteoclasts forming this cutting cone here so this is the cutting cone and following them from behind are osteoblast cells so if we cut it here in the filling cone area so we can see this central area entirely filled by the osteoblast cell which are forming new bone and when the entire new bone formation happens so these osteoblast cell will go here and they will line this haversian canal along with the blood vessel in the canal so finally when the new bone formation has happened completed so a reversal line is there between the old bone and new bone and a part of the osteon which is not resorbed will remain behind now as interstitial lamellae so that is how it happens in the compact bone two cones are seen now let's see what are the factors there can be systemic and local systemic factors are mainly hormones the ones which cause decreases bone resorption calcitonin estrogen increases bone resorption are parathyroid hormone glucocorticoids and high doses of vitamin d so parathyroid hormone and calcitonin work antagonist to each other then the hormones which increase bone formation growth hormone vitamin d insulin and parathyroid hormone in low doses and the ones which decrease bone formation are glucocorticoids local factors which are secreted at that region growth factors and various cytokines like interleukins and prostaglandin e2 now pathologies diseases which can arise first is osteoporosis where there is increased resorption and osteopetrosis where there is denser bones then there can be bone tumors inside the bone which can cause resorption inflammatory joint diseases can also cause and hyperparathyroidism and hyperthyroidism can also lead to changes in remodeling pages disease where there is abnormal remodeling and things all these pathologies can also arise in the jaw bones now how do we know that bone turnover has increased there is a marker which is called the biological serum marker the levels of which increase whenever there is increased turnover so this marker is very useful this is called trap that is tartrate resistant acid phosphatase so that can be used now summary of the bone remodeling what it is old bone is replaced by new bone also known as bone turnover when it happens during growth phase after fractures repair of micro cracks mineral homeostasis how it happens it happens in a sequence of five phases So in trabecular bone, this activation is by signal initiation. Resorption is by osteoclast cell reversal. Is by reversal cell formation of reversal line formation. Law, new bone formation by osteoblast and resting. They become flattened cell over the bone. In the compact bone, we can see two cones. That is cutting cone. That is the leading edge of the resorption by the osteoclast and the filling cone. The area where the active bone formation happens. And when the new bone is completely formed, the haversian system is reconstructed, and we can see a cement line in between the two. bones old bone and new bone factors can be systemic and local and there can be many pathologies now let's check what have you learned so old bone is replaced by what bone two types of cells in remodeling five phases of remodeling area of resorption in alveolar bone is called what cone and a active area of bone formation of by osteoblast is called what cone so that's all for this video if you really enjoyed the video do tap on the like button and share this video with your friends keep watching keep learning keep smiling good luck for your exam see you in the next video soon till then take care bye bye